Uh, all right. This is uh, Stratic JS. I'm AJ. Hi. Hi. Uh, before I start, uh, raise your hand if you know what a static site generator is. Okay. So most people. So I'll just like breeze through like explaining that. Uh, okay. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm like a free software nerd. Uh, I really like Node.js. Uh, Stratic is written in Node, um, and I, I really like. Unix philosophy, um, and so we're going to talk a lot about that because it's like heavily influences the design. Uh, and I am the primary author of Stratic, um, and so if you find bugs or hate it, uh, you can tell me directly. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. All right. So what what is it, right? Um, Stratic JS is is a one time generation of it's a static site generator. I I put this because like. Um, you know, I wasn't sure if people would know what static site generators are, but like, it's a static site generator. Um, it's written in Node, and it's based on the Gulp build system. We're gonna we're gonna talk about all this stuff later. Um, and the design is is focused on directly exposing uh, the internals, which ends up being a good idea because uh, it also focuses on having clean internals that are sort of easy to understand and and um, work with. Uh, and this, this ends up, this basically results in a system that is easier to understand. You have a cleaner mental model for how it actually works and how the pieces fit together. Uh, and it ends up being more flexible than other systems too. Uh, and Stratic is currently in beta. So this is, this is the bit where I'm going to explain what static site generators are. If you need a refresher, basically like in traditional blogging platforms, you've got like a, a what you see is what you get editor. An incoming request would like invoke a bunch of code to render out the page. Typically, it would call out to like a database too. Um, <clears throat> and if you refreshed, the same thing would happen, right? So the code would be run again. It would call out to the database even if content <coughs> wasn't changed. Uh, and so this is the niche that static site generators are designed to fill, right? Is if you take all the computation that happens in that code and just push it to like a one-time build step instead of every time. Uh, a request comes in, then it ends up being more efficient and easier to deploy um, because the web server's job becomes not, well, invoke all this code, but just like take something off disk and like shove it in the network. So uh, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, also, I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but I didn't. Uh, I, I like to take questions during my talks. Like I don't mind if getting interrupted or whatever. So yeah, feel free to ask questions. Cool. So let's talk about this thing called Jekyll, um, which was written in Ruby by Tom Preston Werner. He was a co-founder uh, of GitHub. Um, and he wrote this thing called Jekyll, and, which is a static site generator. And it really brought static sites uh, sort of into vogue. And they became very, like, for lack of a better word, like trendy. Um, and the way that Jekyll works um, is you have a bunch of well-defined directories and they each do a thing. Um, so you have an underscore SAS directory which stores um, SAS files. SAS is a CSS preprocessor. You have underscore posts that, under, that stores you know, blog posts uh, and et cetera. And another way to phrase this is it works through magic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to learn what all of these directories mean, right? They, they all have this sort of magical thing and if you put things in there then stuff happens and you don't really know why because the build process isn't clear right like if you look at Jekyll you can't actually tell without reading the Jekyll source code how those directories actually get turned into a static site uh, uh, quick question yes uh, what is Stratic written in Stratic is written in uh, JavaScript on it's built on top of Node.js so, so, so when you process the SAS, do you have to invoke Ruby for that? Uh, yeah. So, Stratic does not use SAS because it's like sort of tied to Ruby. I think oh, there's oh, like you a. Just, you just talk about Jekyll. This is yeah. So Jekyll okay. uses SAS. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think for me, a, a big problem with Jekyll is that there are too many concepts, right? Like, Jekyll has a concept of it. It has. Uh, layouts includes collections, like what, what is a collection, right? You would have to read the docs. Um, posts, Jekyll has its own plugin ecosystem, and a lot of these are sort of generally understandable, right? We all know what a blog post is, 
but they have a Jekyll specific implementation. You have to read the docs in order to understand like what this means in the context of Jekyll. Um, and so it's all very Jekyll specific. Um, I mentioned I would talk about Unix. The Unix philosophy says, do one thing and do it well, write programs that work together, write programs to handle text streams, because that is a universal interface. Uh, this is a quote from Doug McIlroy, who invented the Unix pipe. Um, and so my question is, like, what one thing does Jekyll do, right? Like, you could say, well, it generates static sites, but that's, that's not one thing, right? Because you can break that down into more than one thing, like it, it you know, uh, renders markdown, it, it, uh, it processes SAS, right? It, it builds stuff. It's, it's not clear that it's, it's one thing, right? So, um, let me talk about something that maps to Unix uh, a little better. Gulp uh, is, is a build system, and we're going to look at, a, at an example of this in just a sec. Um, it's, it's a build system written in Node, uh, and it's, it's basically its job is to like orchestrate some tasks. Um, and the way that Gulp works is it handles streams of um, in-memory objects that represent files, um, generally on the file system. Uh, and you, you trans, excuse me, you connect, basically, uh, you connect these streams together. Let me rephrase that. When you have this, this stream of file objects, you're able to connect uh, that stream into transforms that will do some operation on the file. Um, so for example, rendering markdown to HTML. <coughs> uh, and so here's an example of gulp. Um, the API is pretty simple. Um, Gulp.task, this is just, this is defining a task called HTML, and it's saying this is, this is the function, whoops, uh, this is the function that defines how that task works. Um, Gulp.source, is creating uh, what's called a read stream. And a read stream is basically just, it's, it's a stream that you could read things out of, right? Um, and I'm saying create, based on this, this is a pattern um, that's matched. Uh, so anything in the source directory that's um, named something.pug uh, will be read into this stream and, and will have like an object representing that file in memory. Uh, pug is is a um, templating engine, so it lets you write um, sort of a nicer syntax that then can, can get compiled to HTML uh, by this transform, um, and it also lets you do looping constructs and stuff. Yes? To clarify, <coughs> is Pug like the renamed version of Jade? Pug is, yeah, Pug is the renamed version of Jade, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, they, they had some stupid like trademark thing, and it's it's a whole thing. It really bothers me, but whatever. Um, that's not the point. Uh, yeah, and so this is this is another um, transform. This is just going to rename the files because um, so all the content of the files will have been transformed in this step to HTML, but we they still have the file name uh, .pug or they ended .pug. So we just want to do some housekeeping and rename that, and then we're going to pipe it to this gulp.dest. And what gulp.dest is it stands for destination. And this is, um, it's, it's technically a write stream, it's technically what's called a through stream, which um, both of these are too, and that means that it can read and write, but for the purposes of this discussion, it's basically a write stream, um, which means a stream that you can write things into uh, and, and it doesn't come out the other side. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know how familiar people are with JavaScript here, but this can be a little confusing. This dot pipe is a method on, on this read stream. It's just like on the next line for alignment. Um, and this is, dot pipe is basically just saying like, connect this read stream to this transform. Does that kind of make sense to everyone? Okay, neat. Uh, does, it, does it generally make sense how this example works? Okay, right on. <clears throat> so, uh, breaking down exactly what Stratic is. On a technical level, it's, it's a set of really modular Gulp plugins um, and a Yeoman generator. Yeoman, if you don't know, is, is uh, basically what it does is you say like, I want to start a web app and it will scaffold you out like a web app project so you don't have to write like lots of boilerplate. Um, and that's all that Stratic is. So all that you need to use it is you need to 
do npm install dash g for global. Um, yo is yeoman. Generator stratic is like basically a plugin for yeoman that lets it generate a stratic project. Uh, and then you need gulp to run like the, the build process. Uh, and once you've installed dependencies, you just create a new directory and you tell yeoman generate a stratic project. It will ask you a couple questions, not that many. Uh, and then you can do gulp serve and you'll have a local development server that you can uh, visit in your browser and see. Uh, and so what, what has just happened is it's generated this project that is, it's the only hard dependency is gulp. Um, but by default, it uses pug um, it, for, for templating, so to, to write HTML basically in a nicer syntax. Um, I'll show an example of this later. Uh, and, and we also need pug to do some like looping constructs over JavaScript variables. Um, it uses markdown, um, although that is not also not a hard dependency. And there's some other bits floating around, um, like Stylus, for example, is a CSS preprocessor, somewhat analogous to um, SCSS. And the thing I want to emphasize here is like, you do have to learn these things, right? But all of them are broadly applicable. You'll find uh, every single one of these technologies in lots of other projects in Node that, that don't look like Stratic. They don't really have anything to do with Stratic. Um, and, and so this is all very standard. Um, and there's nothing in this list that's really uh, tied to Stratic um, in, in the same way that, you know, Jekyll plugins are tied to Jekyll, right? They're not, if you learn how to um, write a Jekyll post or a Jekyll plugin, you can't use that skill outside of Jekyll, right? Um, as opposed to this. So here's an example of what a, what, what a post looks like in the default strata configuration that you'll get. Um, this is something called YAML front matter, and this is just basically metadata. Um, so like this is the title, this is the title of this post is example post. This is some time information about when I authored this. Um, here's my name, uh, and then this is the categories that it's in, right? So it's only in one category, but I could put like more than one. Um, this, is, this is a format called YAML. It maps uh, pretty directly to like JSON essentially. Um, so this will end up being like an array. If I put more than one of these, that would be more elements in the array, et cetera. Uh, and then down here is just like the actual text of the post. And there's nothing really special about this. It's just marked down. Uh, okay, so here is an example of how you generate post pages in Stratix. So like um, pages that are just for one blog post. Uh, we're defining a task called posts. And in that, we're, we're reading in some markdown files um, from, from the source blog directory. And then we're going to pipe that to this front matter module, which just extracts that YAML front matter that I just uh, showed you. And, and it attaches it to the, so remember, each, this is generating a stream of objects that are representing files. And this front matter transform is just basically attaching the, the metadata that it got out of the front matter to the file object so that other objects, or excuse me, other modules can consume it. Um, and here we're rendering that markdown to HTML. Date and path uh, is, is basically what it does is it, it does, uh, it messes with the file path a little. So it will look at that time information, uh, this right here, and it will basically massage the path. So instead of getting like uh, slash blog slash you know hello world or whatever you'll get it's like slash blog slash 2017 slash 05 slash hello world right so you get like dates in your in your URLs which is kind of nice um, yeah and then uh, here what this is doing this add source module is basically saying take all of the files that that are coming down the pipeline right now and then just add this one extra one in. Um, and so this post.pug is basically just, um, it's, it's the template uh, that, that's going to be used to actually render individual post pages. Uh, this attach to template module, um, what this does is this says, okay, I'm going to tell you that there's this special file coming down the pipeline that's going to be treated as a template. And I just want you to take all the other files and make them like uh, essentially a parameter to this template. 
Does that kind of make sense? So for every other file, you'll end up with a copy of the template with the original file attached. And so this means that when we then pipe that into this pug renderer, um, the template is able to get at like the original post file and, and use the metadata and insert the contents into the page, et cetera. And then we're just doing some more housekeeping and writing it back to disk. Does this kind of make sense? Okay, right on. So I want to I want to call out a couple things in in that example. The first was that there was only one Stratic specific module in that entire thing, and that's date to path. Or excuse me, date in path. Uh, that's that's the only one that only works for Stratic. The rest are just generic Gulp modules that you would find in any project. Um, some of them I wrote specifically for Stratic. For example, attached to template. But the way that the system works is that those like attached to template can also be used in other modules, right? Or excuse me, other projects. It's, it's generic um, and works for a lot of different things. So some consequences of this design is that we don't have our own plugin ecosystem, right? There's no concept of a Stratic plugin because it's all just generic Gulp modules. And that means that we also don't need to reinvent like the entire world, right? If you want to use something um, in, in a system like Jekyll, if you want to use something that Jekyll doesn't support, you have to like add that support to Jekyll, right? Um, but it's not like that in Stratic because, because it, it works with what is already there. Um, and each piece works on its own, uh, which is sort of related to that, right? And so it's, it's this, this is where the Unix philosophy comes in, is it's like a separation of concerns thing. Um, and something that I really like about this is that you can literally read the build process, right? I just explained exactly how this pipeline works. This is, this is the entire build process for Stratic. And so you don't need to read the code of these modules in order to understand roughly like this is the pipeline for how, how internally it actually works, right? Um, and I, in, I think one of the killer features of this system is that because it's just generic stuff, you, you can incrementally, if you, if you have a hand-maintained site where you're editing the HTML by hand, you can actually transform that site into Stratic, but incrementally. Um, so you can just add little bits at a time, and, and at each step, you'll end up with a system that works better than before, um, but still like works, right? Um, so for example, you could add gulp to your system, and then you could rewrite your HTML in, in Pug. And then maybe you could add some like, um, then you know maybe you could add some Stratic stuff. But in between each of those steps, your site continues to work as opposed to you having to go through everything all at once and convert them into, uh, you know, a Jekyll project or whatever that has those like magic directories, right? Uh, yeah. So I I, I want to go through like a sort of case study when I when I came up with Stratic, uh, I came up with this this module called Stratic Parse Header, and it was this really harebrained scheme where like, it was the original metadata system. It was, it was there in place of YAML front matter. Um, and it, it was based on, the idea was like you were, supposed to be, you, you were supposed to be able to write markdown that looked kind of natural, and you would surround the, the title and author and metadata like that in quotes, uh, and then it would like find the values based on uh, the quotes. And it turns out that this is just like an awful idea. Like, it's horribly inflexible, and it's just like, it doesn't work. Um, so here's, here's what that looked like, right? So this would be the post title, this would be the time, the author, et cetera, right? And the, the system wouldn't really care about any of this other text. It would just look at, you know, what's in between the quotes. But the problem with this is that you can't add more metadata. Like, if you, if you want to add more stuff than what's in these four fields, you are screwed. Um, if you wanted to put, it didn't support like, um, if you wanted to put a quote in your post title, that didn't work because it didn't know how to handle like uh, escaping quotes. And it was just like uh, unnecessary, like it was, it was a really terrible idea. Um, so I was like, okay, we should probably use the YAML front matter instead of this terrible thing that I came up with. Uh, and the only changes that I needed to, to do that was I changed the markdown. Uh, to use the YAML front matter, right, instead of that weird header. And then I went into my gulp file and I replaced, um, I replaced the, the call to the parse module to 
But I, I replaced that with basically like that front matter parser that I showed you earlier. And that was it. I only changed the parts that were affected. I didn't have to touch any of the rest of the system and it just continued to work because there was this separation of concerns where, where nothing depended on each other, right? So, yeah, does, does that make sense? Okay, am I going too fast? I, I can't tell. All right, sweet. So, um, here's a more complex example. Um, this is the way that you generate indexes. And by indexes, I basically just mean, so like if you go to my blog, um, oops. If you go to my blog, you get this nice like list of posts, right? That's what I mean by an index. Um, and there are more, there are indexes for like by year too. So here I can get only posts uh, from the year 2017. Uh, and so the way that this works is, to be clear, this is a separate gulp task, even though this, this beginning bit uh, is the same, just because it's just like, it's yeah, it's the same. Like you have to read you know, markdown files in for both of them, right? And you have to extract, like, um, you have to extract the metadata, right? Um, but then what uh, what we do after that is we still do this, like, add source thing, but right now we're, we're adding in this index template instead of um, a post template. And so then we pipe it to this posts to index, uh, module and what posts to index does is we're, we're again giving it we're saying like this is the name of this template um, that you should expect in the stream coming down into this module uh, and posts to index is basically going to say okay here's the template I'm just going to create a copy of this template and populate it with some posts depending on the type of index that I'm generating um, and then you know uh, after you write like I, I got to the point where I had, you know, like 15 posts on my blog and you would be scrolling down the front page and it would just never end. And so I was like, okay, I should probably make that uh, paginated. And so then all you have to do is you pipe it into paginate indexes. And this basically just takes incoming indexes and splits them into multiple pages. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, and then we're just doing some standard stuff, right? We're rendering pug, we're doing some housekeeping, renaming the file, and then we're gonna write it up to disk. So, again, like I, I only had the bare minimum of stratic modules, right? I had date and path, posts index, and paginate indexes. The rest of it was completely generic. Um, each component doesn't care about any of the other components. It just works um, because uh, it's, it's based on not like a, a strong convention or anything. It's just, it has this, excuse me, it has this Loose, loose conventions on what uh, properties are expected to exist on the incoming uh, vinyl file objects. And I just wanted to take it, uh, I wanna highlight this issue that I opened. Um, I, take, I take this, this extensibility like really seriously. Um, so I was deprecating stratic parse header and um, I was running into some trouble because the way that the way that this was originally done is the metadata would be attached directly to the file object. So you would, uh, the, the title would be available at file.title um, and the time would be available at file.time. Uh, and this caused some really serious interoperability problems because the convention in the Gulp ecosystem is that whenever you're attaching sort of um, extra data to a file, you attach it to file.data. Um, and so basically, <coughs> excuse me, Basically, like, I, I ended up going through all the modules and changing them to use file.data because otherwise um, you, would, you would have problems where you couldn't just plug in any other plugin in the ecosystem and, and roll with it, um, which what I felt was really problematic, and so I went through and made this change. Uh, yeah. So, again, like, if you, so if you hate Markdown, I, I happen to like Markdown, that's why it's the default, but if you really hate Markdown, you can replace the YAML front matter parser, and then you get rid of Remark and replace it with something else, and then you're done. The rest of the system continues to work. If you hate Pug, um, you can rewrite the templates in something other than Pug in your preferred templating language, uh, and you can like basically rename the template because there are some references to like the file name in the gold file, right? Um, 
for example, in add source where we're actually reading the template into the stream. And then you can replace um, the pug transform with something else that's basically just, it's just rendering your preferred templating language to HTML and then you're done again, right? Um, yeah, and so basically any, any component of the system can be swapped out um, even if I, even if there isn't support for it, even if I've never heard of it, it still just works. Um, and so this works because, again, there's just these, fi these, there's these file objects coming down the pipe. Um, these are done with a library called Vinyl. Um, and uh, yeah, as I, as I mentioned earlier, like it just works through these conventions, um, file.data.property name, um, is, is what's used, and this is because this, as I again mentioned earlier, uh, this is just the convention for extra data um, that, that lots of plugins expect, Gulp plugins, that is. Um, and so on each file, you'll get like um, sort of the, the usual suspects, so like the title of the blog post, the author, um, the way that time is represented in this system. I, when I practice this presentation, I uh, someone was like, "This is a terrible time system." So if you if you care about time, you can you can provide me feedback. I don't use. I'm getting ahead of myself. The way that the time works is it's just seconds. Um, it's it's Unix time. So seconds since uh, December 31st, 1969, I think, whenever Unix time starts, um, and then it's basically it has this sort of quasi time time zone information system, which is basically just like how many hours away you are from coordinated universal time. I, I do not, I don't use this. So I don't know if this is actually painful to use if you care about like displaying time information in your blog posts. I, I might change this, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, and then you just get categories. Uh, and, and note also that this is just what I put in my YAML front matter, right? Um, so these are being just directly attached to the file object. Uh, and then Stratic posts to index will add a bunch of data um, to files. Uh, the biggest one is just index type. So this is uh, main, year, month, or category, and it basically just directly corresponds to like whatever the purpose of the index is. So like um, if I go back to my blog, this is 2017, so this would be a year index. This, this main page uh, is like a main index, right? Um, and then the rest of these are basically just, you know, I'm not going to read through all these, but they're basically just like um, sort of setting the context for, for the index. So for example, if you have a year index, you might want to know what year it represents, right? Um, if you had a main index, you might want to know what years are included in that index. So this, this included years property is how I do this show only posts from these years. That's based on the included years property. Uh, yeah. So um, in Stratic, I've, I've sort of glossed over like exactly how these properties are used. Um, and that's because all of that logic happens in the templates, um, which by the way, you control. Um, and a lot of the responsibility for sort of connecting things together is pushed to the templates because they have a very direct relationship with the HTML and, and you know, you can do looping constructs in them and stuff like that. Um, so let's see. Uh, 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 I should have opened these beforehand, but that's okay. Um, so this is an example. Can you guys see that? No. Is that better? Okay. So, um, this is, this is an example of a post template. Um, so this is gonna, whoops, this is gonna generate, for example, if I visit this post directly, this is based on uh, this template. And it's basically this block syntax is, uh, it's, it's pug. And it's basically just saying, so this, this extends is saying, here's generally what I want this page to look like. So layout.jade, because I haven't moved from jade to pug, um, layout.jade has common stuff like the site header, the site footer, stuff like that. Um, and in, in layout.jade, I can basically say, 
by the way, so I want all of this to be like the same across pages, but here's like a particular point in the file that I can just like sort of override what's here, right? Um, and this block head is basically just saying um, in this particular point in the layout, like insert this content. Um, and this block content is saying at this other point in, in the layout, insert, you know, this, right? Um, by the way, I should explain better what this is. So this is, Jade is, uh, Pug is white space sensitive, and it's, I sort of, I like to think of it as like um, Python's like indentation, but for HTML. So this will be, um, this will be turned into a uh, title tag. This is interpolation, this is called interpolation. So this is, this file.data.title is a JavaScript property. Um, uh, yeah, so file, file uh, is, is a vinyl object, which is the original post. Um, and it was attached to this template by um, attached to template. And so this is, this is basically, this is file now represents some HTML that was originally marked down. Um, yeah, and so I'm, I'm saying take, uh, take the title from the post and stick it in the title page um, and then do some other stuff. This is a mixin, it's essentially a function. Um, and, and here I'm just saying, here's this file, I want you to, to output all this HTML. Uh, and the reason, that, the reason that this is a mixin is because that sort of output logic is shared between indexes and pages. Um, and this, so to, to, give, to explain the indentation syntax, this uh, will generate a NoScript tag and is a child of that NoScript tag this will generate a paragraph tag with the content, could load web mentions, et cetera. Um, does this sort of make sense? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so this is, this is basically just, this is not super interesting because all of the logic happens in this mixin function and I'll show that to you in just a sec. Um, but before I do, here's the way that indexes work. This is a little more interesting because um, there are a bunch of different types of indexes that we want to handle. So for example, here we're just saying like, make, make, the t make the page have a different title depending on what kind of index it is. So if it's the home page, we'll just say it's blog. Um, but if it's, if it's a year index, we'll say like posts from such and such a year, um, et cetera. And then down here, um, same thing mostly, right? So if it's the main index, then we'll show this thing that's show only posts from and then years. Uh, which again is, where am I? Which is this bit right here. Um, if I visit a year, I get something similar, but for months, and that is uh, this bit right here. So show only posts from, and then it's looping over this each. Each uh, is a loop, and so it's looping over um, this included months, which I mentioned earlier, is attached to the object by uh, posts to index. Yes. And this is essentially a one-time run that produces a whole bunch of um, HTML files that are a single file that are having different routes inside it, or multiple files. So multiple files. So um, each. Yeah. So so uh, I mentioned earlier, like attached to template, that's what's generating those multiple files. Um, yeah, like so each, each post will be attached to like, essentially, essentially the way it works is that, um, uh, like let, let's say that the template is, is in a variable called file. Um, the, mar like the markdown post will be attached to the template file at file.data.post, right? Um, which is where, uh, so like in, in this example, that's where this file is coming from, is that's the original markdown post. And so this will result in a different HTML file for every index and every post. Did that answer your question? Great. Coolio. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna go through this entire thing, but like here we can see again, we're just iterating over the posts in the index um, and we're calling this render post uh, mixin again. Um, and here we're just, this is just some logic 
to basically show the page count at the bottom, which is surprisingly complex. You would think it would be easy, but there's a bunch of edge cases because, well, if the page count is one, you have to display something different, which is here. Uh, and you know, if we're on the last page, then you have to you know, not display a link and stuff like that. Uh, and so this is basically just boring stuff that's generating um, this. Cool, all right. Uh, oh, and I, I said I would also show this. So this is the mix-in, um, which is, again, basically just a function. Yes? Uh, <clears throat> going real quick back to page, the pages what just happened? you mentioned. Um, and earlier to the code snippet in the presentation, mm -hmm. there was a uh, module that was like, was it um, paginate something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, paginate indexes. How does mm -hmm. does that relate to the pagination that you just described? And yeah. How does that interconnect with each other? Yeah. So essentially, what paginate indexes <coughs> does is, for every index file that's coming into it, it will just split it into um, oh, multiple okay. indexes. So uh, essentially, I'm glossing over the details a bit, but essentially, all it does is every index has an array of like these are the um, these are the posts that are included in this index, and it just it just splits it to like a certain length and generates a a another copy of the index for each um, uh, for each array that it's split it up into, right? Um, and it does attach some additional metadata on like this is what page um, the index is, and you can see that being used. Uh, this is the wrong file. You can see that being used in this in this page logic, so like this, this again is interpolation, page is a JavaScript variable that represents like what page it is, right? Does that make sense? Cool. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is this is the mixing <coughs> that actually renders out posts. This is a little more complex than what you get with just like an out of the box Stratic installation because this is my personal uh, posts page, but like it's mostly the same. And so um, here we're just like generating um, a h1 with the post's title. Um, here, this is this is just pure JavaScript, right? We're we're creating some variables to set up a bunch of stuff. Like uh, we want the name of the month instead of you know a number representing the month, right? Um, and then this is just saying like here's I publish this, uh, like, and then there's all these like I want to display some categories. This is really hard to read. Um, but but you can say you can see like uh, so it says published by Alex Jordan on the month name uh, and I'm gonna close this and so we can see published by me uh, in, on the month name and then we want like basically just in and then a, the, the list of categories right and that's what this loop is and so we see in and then the list of categories. Uh, yeah, and then the last the last bit here is that this is what's actually inserting um, the contents of the file into the HTML. And remember, we've the contents of the contents of the post are already HTML because we have rendered them using Remark like way earlier in the process. Okay, cool. So uh, if, you, if you are inserting some kind of theme. Mm -hmm. That requires you then to go in and adjust the gulp module to add the theme. So um, it depends on what you mean by themes. Like uh, if if you if you want to just add styling um, to your page, then you would just edit. So remember this: all all three of these files are you like own them, right? Um, so if you wanted to like add some some uh, you know like a class to some to some HTML or something so that you could style that using CSS, you would just edit this file directly to do that. Um, Writing yeah. themes by hand from scratch seems like a hard way to go. Yeah. So um, themes is something that I've been thinking a lot about, and I'm not sure. It's something that I'm interested in doing because certainly having like a drop-in theme. Uh, is something that people like. Uh, it's not clear to me how the best way to do that is. 
we could say um, one, one approach would be to not bundle it as an NPM module and just say, well, you have to um, like replace, you know, replace your post.pug with, with this themed one and then you know, add the CSS in. That doesn't feel great for maintainability. Um, yeah, this is, this is certainly something I'm interested in doing and it's not clear what the best design will be. Um, Given all of the yeah. teamwork and the popularity of WordPress themes, you should find a way to leverage that. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it, is, it is something that I'm interested in, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So there's some examples. Here's, here's the, so I wanna give this last example because um, this is one of the more complex things is generating like an RSS feed, right? So people can subscribe to your blog. Um, the beginning bits are the same, right? We're just gonna read in files. Um, and then we're gonna render indexes in the same way that we did in indexes, except instead of rendering them directly, we're gonna pipe them to this um, indexes to RSS module. And this basically says, take this index and, and just turn it into like a feed. Um, and the reason that we do this is because post to index knows about like how to construct indexes based on categories and years and stuff. And so we don't want to duplicate all that logic in indexes to RSS. And so we just say, well, you know, you already have the ability to make indexes, right? So we're just going to use that already and, and turn it into RSS. Um, this right here is just some metadata about, um, it's, it's metadata that gets added to the RSS feed. Uh, and this right here is the URL where, um, where the feed is hosted. And it, it bugs me so much that we need this. But the way that RSS works is you actually have to know where, um, where the blog is in order to construct valid feeds because um, you can't do, if you, if you put a relative link in your blog post, it will work in HTML. Um, but RSS doesn't have the context of like, this is the URL that this feed is at. And so relative links like don't work. And this bugs me so much, but there's nothing I can do about it. And so you have to uh, provide like where your blog is. Yeah. Uh, and so then more housekeeping, right? Here we're just, we're renaming it to have .rss because it's an RSS feed and not an HTML template, but like same thing. Or excuse me, an HTML page, but it's the same thing, right? And then we're just, just Writing it, writing it back to, to disk. So I, you, you brought up themes, uh, which is one of the current issues. This is still in beta, so I, I don't want to like paint a rosy picture and be like, this is the best thing ever, because there certainly are problems. Um, all, everything on this slide is solvable. Um, it's just, you know, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, there are uh, some performance uh, enhancements that we should do. Um, so its performance is certainly not terrible as it is. There's just some things that we can do better. For example, the way that um, file watching works is that if you edit one blog post, it will rebuild all of them, which is really unideal. Um, and so we want to have like an incremental build system. Um, there's some duplication in the gulp file, uh, which you saw earlier, like I was doing the same thing in every task and I have some ideas about how to fix that. Um, yeah, uh, there are also some smaller missing features that I just need to get around to writing. Um, most of these are pretty simple. Um, so drafts, for example, all that you need to do to support drafts is essentially have a transform stream that says, well, if this file has some metadata on it that says it's a draft, I just won't forward it on down the stream. Um, yeah, so things like, things like that that just need some small modules to make them work. Uh, and this is, this is the one I'm like most ashamed of uh, because there are no really good sort of, there's no, the, the project wide documentation is not phenomenal. Uh, like this presentation is probably the best um, that you're gonna get. Each module has good documentation, but there's not, uh, there's not good documentation about how it all fits together. And so that's something that I really wanna focus on. Um, and then, this, this, is, this last one is only sort of true because I actually last night published a beta that fixed part of this and then I forgot to update the slides. Um, but basically just making, uh, I wanna make it so that the system is um, easier to introspect so that when something does go wrong, you can sort of peek at the internals and understand like what it is without having to 
you know, do sketchy things and, and open up a debugger and stuff like that. Yeah, so if this is interesting to you, um, you can join uh, Pound Stratic on Freenode. Uh, this is an IRC channel. Um, install it, try it out. I would love to hear um, your feedback. I have this, there's a repository called, because each module has its own repository, so it can be kind of difficult to track like project-wide issues. So I made this uh, empty repository um, to track sort of generally overarching things. Um, and so this is where I track like, oh, I need to write these new modules, like for example, draft support. Um, and, and we need to make this change <coughs> across all modules. Um, and so if you have like feedback about um, this design is difficult for me for these reasons, or you know, I think it could be done better this way, this is a really great place to put those issues. Um, and yeah, I would, I would love to have feedback on this. It's very new. Um, if you find bugs, feel free to file them. Uh, uh, or you know, if you find this interesting, you can go and fix <coughs> some of the existing issues. Uh, and yeah, uh, I would love to take questions. I do have, wait, before I, before I take questions, I should point out I have, these are online, so you can go and look at the website. later. Um, yes, questions. Um, if, if you push on updated content, did, how do you force a refresh in the uh, users? Um, do you mean, okay, so you mean like if a user already has yeah, the page Yeah, he's got a cache, open? how do you reinforce Oh, if it's cached. Um, so that is mostly, um, so, so that does it generate a new you know, timestamp cache defeat? So uh, <coughs> it does not do that out of the box. Um, if you, certainly if you really want to, uh, like you can make it so that, you can make it so that the, the JavaScript that it builds and the, you know, the CSS and stuff like that have, um, you know, like a unique, uh, Thing Pretty in string, yeah. right, yeah. Um, that is mostly <coughs> caching is is mostly like you have to, to just configure your server right. Um, like if you if you want to do that kind of optimization, like you certainly can. I mean, you know, if your site is not super, the reason. So I, I thought about putting that in in the in the project that is generated out of the box, and the reason that I didn't <coughs> is because. Um, on, on most, you know, this is, I, I expect this will probably be used mostly on smaller sites, you know, personal blogs and stuff like that. And so for those, like, um, the complexity of seeing that in the gulp file doesn't really, uh, I, I worry about it just being overwhelming out of the box, yeah. But you, you can do that. Yes? Did you ever consider a design where, so basically, if you're gonna publish the blog, right, you, you mm -hmm. add a new post. And right. now you're going to run that one gulp task to generate all the static HTML. Mm -hmm. You're going to run the second gulp task to generate the RSS. Mm -hmm. Both of those are doing a lot of duplicated work at the beginning, reading all of the stuff off of disk and building the file structures. Uh -huh. right? So that's one really obvious performance improvement mm -hmm. is, the, like, have you thought about that at all? Like, how Absolutely. can I get this set up so that I build the data structure once and then yeah. generate multiple things off of it? Yeah, so that was what I was mentioning. I mentioned earlier that, that's that's what this is about, right? Okay. Is the duplication. Um, the so there are a couple ways to approach this. I think the way that I'm going to do this is have. It, I mean, the, the the problem is like trading off implementation complexity with performance, right? So like the the most performant way to do this, as far as I can tell, is essentially you have um, each you have you have a, a function in the gulp file that um, says, have I been called before? If not, then I'm going to do all that setup work and, and set up like a, a stream. And, and then I'm going to return uh, essentially a clone of that stream. Right. Um, and if I have been called before, then just return a new clone of that stream, right? Because it's already, we, I've already set it up. Um, that is more complex, right? Than, than something like um, every time you set up that stream sure. and then it you know, you just return that, but then that has the same duplication problem, right? It's 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 not duplicated in the file, but it's duplicated at runtime. And so I, I think we're going to end up doing something like, it just doesn't make sense to do all that work uh, more times, so we're going to do the more complex thing. Yeah, it's um, basically but, like a, yeah. a lazy loaded data structure. Yeah, essentially. Cool, thanks. Sure. 
Uh, I think you were first. Can you uh, talk a little bit about what you see this as a unique differentiator from the other NPM-based um, static generators like Metal Skid or Wintersmith mm -hmm. or Texel? Yeah, so I have tried out, um, I tried out Wintersmith. Um, and and I didn't like it because uh, I, I found it to be sort of similar to Jekyll in that I wasn't really sure what was going on. I was just adding these sort of quasi-magical config files. Um, and yeah, it just, it just felt like a large monolithic system that I had to learn. Um, I did not try out Metalsmith. It looked to be somewhat close to what I was looking for. But the, the one problem that I had with it was that it did there is a concept of a metalsmith plugin, right? So it did it did like sort of reinvent its own plugin ecosystem and that means that you have to if you want to adopt something new, you have to like write, you know, a wrapper for that ecosystem and that's kind of a bummer. Um, whereas with this it's it's really generic, right? I also I don't I I don't think I ever knew what metalsmith config looked like and even if I did, I don't remember it, but I I would say for this one of the biggest benefits is still like if we if we look at this example like this is the build process right and and this is exposed directly to you and i think it just has a cleaner mental model right in particular because and i guess this doesn't apply to metalsmith as much but like i think this is how people tend to think about build systems right is like i take my source and then i do some stuff on it and then i plop it somewhere else um, and so i think this maps really cleanly to that instinctual me mental model, which a lot of other systems don't, which causes a lot of confusion. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. Well, yeah. Another, the, the other thing that I, I really do think is, uh, let me see, where did I mention it? Another thing that I, I really do think is a killer feature is this ability to like convert a, a static site to Stratic. Um, so like, Here's, I, I wrote this blog post. I have to go back and finish this, but like, uh, this is an example site. So like this projects.html is like hand-maintained, right? Um, and so each one of these steps, here we're just like adding in gulp, right? Here, and, and not doing anything else. And at the, at the end of this step, you have productivity wins. Your site still works, so you can continue to make changes to it, right? And, and publish it, and it will build. Um, and then when, whenever you're ready, uh, wow, this is really long. Whenever you're ready, um, you, can, you can go convert your HTML to, to Jade or Pug now, I guess. Um, ooh, that's a typo. I should fix that. Um, you, can, you can convert your HTML to Pug and then use that to get like layouts and stuff and all of that, right? And then you get more productivity wins, but your site continues to work, and et cetera. Yeah. Um, is, is statically generated sites suitable for e-commerce? Let's say if you're selling a fixed number of items. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. And I, it would depend on your exact use cases. Like, like a, is it possible to call out from, from a static site to a third party so they can pay via PayPal? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then PayPal sends you back something like a receipt, and you can you know who to mail this product to. You know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, small scale e-commerce. Yeah, I I don't know exactly how the PayPal API works. Essentially, like so, the the definition of a static site is that is basically just that it's not doing anything server side. So any anything that you have to any interactive part of the site has to happen client side in the browser. If you can make something work with that, then you could do it. Um, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, uh, you static pass sites. It off to Amazon or yeah, you could pass it off to Amazon too. Work and then it'll return you back to your site when you're done. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you can do is um, you can run some sort of dynamic thing on like a subdomain or something and reference that in your static site. And so then for like 90% of the code base, you get the benefits of like, static site and then and then you just have the little bit off in the corner that's dynamic that you have to deal with. Um, certainly this is this is not the right solution for uh, everything. Like um, I think it, de it depends on well, well, yeah like what you're doing with it. It's, yeah. tr it's attractive from the point of view that it won't get hacked. 
Yeah. Right. Definitely. Yeah. And, and if like you're you're relying on PayPal to handle like everything for you, then you're not gonna get hacked. They might get hacked, but you're right. not gonna get hacked. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, more questions? Awesome. Uh, uh, say where the slides are again. Yeah, they are right there. Presentation Thank you all so much for coming. It's been lovely. Does anyone still need this link, or can I unplug it? Sweet, okay.